Friends, good morning and welcome. We're glad you can join us for virtual worship today. As I begin with announcements, we're up to seven people in the congregation that I know of who have COVID. So again, I'm making the decision to shut down live worship for the month of November. We'll be only live streaming during this month. I simply don't want to take a chance on it spreading to anyone in our congregation unnecessarily taking risks. And so we'll examine this for December, see where the virus is around us and within our congregation. A few other announcements, if you need help leaf raking, you can contact the church and the youth group can come out and rake leaves at your house or do other things you might need help with. Today we'll be recognizing veterans in honor of Veterans Day on November 11th. So some veterans have pre-recorded parts of the service for our Veterans Day service. On Operation Christmas Child, the shoe boxes are here at the church. Normally we have many more of these picked up than we have because, because, of course, we haven't had attendance at church as high as normal. But if you want to stop by the church this week and pick one of these shoe boxes up to be filled, they're due next week because they have to be sent overseas. So if you're able to come by, pick one of these up and fill them up this week, it would be appreciated. On Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock, the backpack ministry is still packing food for hungry kids in the fellowship hall. So if you're able to come by the church and help on Tuesday mornings at 10, that would be appreciated. And finally, I announced that the paperwork finally was received, the money received for the sale of Warren First UMC. So it still will remain a church as well. It took a lot of time, but everything worked out in the end, and I praise God for that. Friends, this concludes our announcements. Our prelude this morning has been pre-recorded by Ken Conklin, and um, he's recorded something for Veterans Day for us, honoring America, and Ken served as a chaplain and as a veteran. And so here's Ken on his piano at home as we honor America this morning for Veterans Day this week. Thank you, Ken. Our theme today is that presidents come and go. Those kinds of things change, but God is always on the throne, and there's only one king forever. So from the ground, its opening song today is Only King Forever.
the only solid ground as nations rise and fall. Kingdoms once strong now shaken, we trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Imagine all your wisdom in love and justice. Please pray with me. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise that you are king forever. Presidents may come and go, kings on earth, queens on earth may come and go, but you are king forever. You are always on your throne and you reign on high and you watch over us with your love and power. And so we gather together in our homes, Lord, this morning, even though we're scattered, we're still united in spirit, Lord. We're still one. And so, Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for all that you give us, give to us, and do for us every day. And we pray, Lord, that you will use each one of us to do your work and will in this world to make it the place you want it to be. In your name we pray. 
Amen. Friends, I forgot to announce that there is no youth group tonight. There's no youth group tonight. Youth, please check the Remind app, and you can see what is going on. As I said, we have Veterans Day this week, and I thought following the presidential election, we want to make sure we honor some veterans in our congregation by asking them to lead parts of the service. And so this morning's children's sermon is going to be brought to us by Air Force veteran Chris Wedzig from his home. So this is Air Force veteran Chris Wedzig bringing this morning's children's message. Good morning, Holland United Methodist Church. <clears throat> My name is Chris Wedzig, and I will be doing the children's sermon this morning. As you know, we just elected a new president, and I'm sure you've heard the new president is Joe Biden. Some people are happy about that, and some people are going to be sad about that. The president is a very important person, and he has the power to change many things in our country and in our world. But just remember that no matter what the election results were, we are all Americans and we are all in this together. I have the power to change the world, and so do all of you kids. Each one of us can change this country. You may not grow up to be president, but each one of us has power. I proudly served in our nation's military, the United States Air Force, for 28 years. This Wednesday is Veterans Day, and we thank all of our veterans who changed our country with their service. Their service has made our country stronger. But just like you don't have to grow up to be president to serve our country, you don't have to grow up to be a veteran to serve either. There are many ways you can serve which make our country and the whole world a better place. Of course, whenever we serve God, we make the world a better place. Who knows, maybe one day you will grow up to be president, or maybe you'll be in the military, or whatever you grow up to be, make sure that you have Jesus in your heart. If we let Jesus guide our hearts and lives and grow up serving God, then no matter what profession you choose, you will be making the world a better place because God will be guiding your life. Let's pray. God. Please be with President Biden and guide his life. Please be with those serving our military now and keep them safe and guide their lives on Veterans Day and always. And please be with all of us and guide our lives and to help us believe each one of us has your power in us and so has the power to change the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chris. As we come to our prayer concerns this morning, joys and concerns, I begin with the joy. Bob McClellan's carotid artery surgery went well, and Bob is at home recovering, so we want to continue to pray for Mac. And then I mentioned that there are seven people that I know of that have COVID now in a congregation. Jan and Charlie Rice developed it as well this past week, so um, they're home and doing well. Linda Giesick is doing well, but Lee is still in the hospital and is still struggling, so please keep Lee in your prayers. Bob and Nancy Hoy, Bob is doing better. Nancy's still in the hospital, so of course, please keep Nancy in your prayers. And then Sandra Johnston has developed it as well, and Sandra is in the hospital with pneumonia right now, so please keep all of these people struggling with COVID and some other health factors that some of these people have as well as well as all those who are dealing with it across our country and indeed our world. And then we want to pray for people who have lost loved ones recently. I mentioned last week we had three congregation members pass away, so we want to remember the Irene Mines family, the Jerry Steer family, and the Donna Lott family. That's the Downs and Oleski family as well. And I ask you to continue to pray for Dale Gephardt, Georgia Stefani, Dave Gibbs, Betty Allen, and Bill Stanko, who need prayers as they recover. And then Kelly Fry, this is Ann Monroe's cousin, just passed away. So please remember Ann's uncle and their family in your prayers as well. 
This morning, as we prepare our hearts for prayer, I ask Clay to do two short songs to kind of go together. The first, God bless America. On this Veterans Day and following this election, we want to pray that God would bless America. And I asked also if you would do something about that name because there's a line in that song very appropriate for today. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something about that name, that name of Jesus that never changes. So as prayer hearts are prayer, listen, as firmly grounded brings us, God bless America, and there's something about that name. Kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something about that name. And may God bless America. May we unite our hearts in prayer together this morning as Navy veteran Jean Heitzenrader brings our morning prayer. Let's pray together with Jean. My name is Eugene Heitzenrader, and I served in the United States Navy from 1958 to 1962. Dear God, we come to you today with grateful hearts, grateful for the blessings you have given us each day. Today, we ask for a special blessing upon our country. We pray that you will bless our president and the newly elected leaders who will be serving. Guide their hearts and minds so that they may seek your wisdom to guide them. And with, the veteran, with Veterans Day this week, we ask a special blessing upon those veterans who have served. 
and especially upon those who are now serving. Keep them safe and let them know we are supported and loved. As we wait, as we ask for your blessings, we pray you will also bless the people who have been mentioned this morning. Please touch those who need your healing power and let your Holy Spirit give comfort and strength to anyone who is mourning. Whenever it is possible, may you use each one of us to provide the word of comfort, encouragement, hope, strength, or love. And we pray these things together this morning in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us this daily our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gene. Once more, if we want to thank our veterans and honor America on this Veterans Day, we're going to have firm the ground to lead us in America the Beautiful. you've been worshiping with us lately, we've been going through the Old Testament, going through the books in chronological order, and we've come to the book of Daniel. And so, so this morning's story is going to be about the writing on the wall. It's an old phrase, when you've probably heard over years, the writing is on the wall. The phrase means it's over. The outcome has been determined. That's all she wrote. The writing is on the wall. But maybe you didn't know where that phrase originated. This morning we're still in the book of Daniel, and I tried to time the story of the writing on the wall to come for today, the Sunday after the presidential election. I had two different variations of the sermon ready, one to try to comfort our Republican friends, and one to try to comfort our Democrat friends. But in the end, the real message is the same either way. But first, we need to hear the story of the writing on the wall. And so to tell most of the story, we'll listen to two veterans in our congregation read the stories from their Bibles. Mike Bolas will begin, and he'll be followed by Bob McDonald, both Army veterans. 
and then I'll finish the story. So listen to the story of the writing on the wall from the book of Daniel, first from Mike Bolas and then from Bob McDonald. Five verses one through 12. Belshazzar the king invited a thousand of his officers to a great feast where the wine flowed freely. While Belshazzar was drinking, he was reminded of the gold and silver cups taken long before from the temple of Jerusalem during Nekubandesnar's reign and brought to Babylon. Belshazzar ordered that these sacred cups be brought in to the feast, and when they arrived, he and his princesses, wives, and concubines drank toasts from them to their idols made of gold and silver, brass and iron, wood and stone. Suddenly they were drinking from these cups. They saw the fingers of a man's hand writing on the plaster of the wall opposite the lampstand. The king himself saw the fingers as they wrote, his face blanched with fear, and such terror gripped him that his knees knocked together and his legs gave way beneath him. Bring the magicians the, and astrologers, he screamed. Bring the charlatans, who ever reads the writing on the wall and tells me what it means, will be dressed in purple robes of royal honor with a gold chain around his neck and become the third ruler of the kingdom. But when they came, none of them could understand the writings or tell him what it meant. The king grew more and more hysterical. His face reflected the terror he felt and his officers were too shaken. But when the queen mother heard of what was happening, she rushed to the banquet hall and said to the Belshazzar, calm yourself, your majesty. Don't be so pale and frightened over this. For there is a man in your kingdom who has within him the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, this man was found to be as full of wisdom and understanding as though he were himself a god. And in the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, he was made chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers of Babylon. Call for this man Daniel, or Balthazar, as the king called him, for his mind is filled with divine knowledge and understanding. He can interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve knotty problems. He would tell you what the writings mean. And Bob McDonald will pick up the story for us from there. Good morning, Holland United Methodist Church. Today I'm going to read to you from my Bible about Daniel, chapter 5, verses 13 through 24. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not slew this interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee, that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretations thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, the father of kingdom, majesty, and glory and honor. And for the majesty he gave him, all people, nations, languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would slew, and whom he would keep, keep alive, and whom he would set up, and whom he would put down. 
But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne. They took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men. And his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was like a wild ass's. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with dew from heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And though his son, Belshazzar, has, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and the lords and their wives and their concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hands who the breath is, and whose are all thy ways, that had not glorified, then was the part of this hand written from him, and this writing was written. This is the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Mike and Bob. So let me try to summarize what they have read for us today. If you remember last week, King Nebuchadnezzar had a huge image built of himself, and he asked people to bow down and pray to that image. Do you remember the story from last week of the fiery furnace? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar, and that's what happened last week, and they were saved from the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar has been succeeded by Belshazzar as king, and Belshazzar is now king, and he receives this writing on the wall, a hand mysteriously appears, a godlike hand, a figure writes words on the wall, he sends for messengers, he sends for his magicians and interpreters, and no one can explain what it means, and they have no recourse except that his queen remembers that in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel was a prophet who was full of vision, and so they send for Daniel, and Daniel comes, and he says, to them, he will interpret what the words mean. So that brings us to the end of the story today. We begin with verse 25. This is the inscription that was written. This is what the hand wrote on the wall, the writing on the wall. Mene, mene, tekel, parson. Mene, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then at Belshazzar's command, this is the new king, Daniel was clothed in purple, a gold chain was placed around his neck, and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. Um, and it ends the reading of God's word. So let me summarize again what these words meant, these words that are on the wall that were written there by that hand, that hand that simply appeared. The word mene means numbered, numbered. It meant that the king's days were numbered. In fact, he would die that night. Tekel meant weighed, that he was weighed on the scales of justice. He wasn't someone who followed God. Remember that Nebuchadnezzar had turned to following God once the fiery furnace story had happened. And then Perez means divided. His kingdom was going to be torn apart. It would be divided among primarily the Medes and the Persians. So that's what those words mean, the writing on the wall. Basically, that time of the king was coming to an end, and that mighty kingdom would be divided. I tried to line the story up with today, because it's the story of a kingdom coming to an end, and God had determined it was time for a king to be removed. And I felt it might be a fitting story to think about following our presidential election, because it's also about division, too, about this kingdom being divided. So I picked it out months ago before the presidential election took place, not knowing how it would go for today. Because here's the thing I want everyone to understand. Presidents come and go. Ones you love, ones you hate. And the nation survives. No matter if you hated or loved Obama, no matter if you hated or loved Trump, the nation survived. Presidents come and go. 
In the end, God is still at work behind the scenes. Presidents come and go, but God is always on the throne, and God is always enthroned in the hearts of God's people. Sure, the president is important, but you know what makes our nation strong? For one thing, with Veterans Day this week, one of the things that makes our nation strong is the brave men and women who have defended it and who continue to defend it today. Our nation is as strong as the people who defend it, and our nation is as strong as the people in it. There are school teachers who have dedicated their lives to loving our nation's children and educating them and giving them a future all across America. And there are doctors and nurses who even in the middle of a pandemic put their health on the line to be able to serve those in need of health care. And there are firefighters who rush into fires to save people and police officers who put themselves at risk every day and countless people across our country who simply get up faithfully and go to their jobs every day. And that's what keeps our economy moving so that each of us can have jobs and be able to provide for our families and for each other. We depend upon each other. That's what makes America work. And it doesn't matter if those veterans or school teachers or doctors or nurses or firefighters or police officers or people faithfully going to their jobs every day or Democrats or Republicans. None of that matters. What makes America great is that all across our country, people lay aside their political beliefs and work side by side to make our country strong. All across our country, people on both sides of the political aisle, our sisters and brothers, neighbors and friends, co-workers and colleagues, our ability to work together despite differences has always been what has made our country great. So what is my prayer for our country today? The same as it has been for the last many years now, that no matter who won the presidency, my prayer would be exactly the same for our leaders to stop attacking each other and trying to win elections by trying to divide us. That they would work together to stop the pandemic, get people back to work, eliminate the deficit, fix social security, rebuild our infrastructure, combat global warming, unite on a plan for health care, work to heal the racial divides, and on and on and on. Our country has many problems to solve, even though it's the greatest country in the world, we've got problems to solve, but they are solvable only when people work together to solve them. So no matter who the president has been or will be now or in the future, my prayer is always the same. May our leaders come together to solve our problems and may they stop trying to divide us, and may we not let ourselves be divided. What has always made us strong, always, is that we are the United States of America. Every day across our country, people work side by side and even hand in hand, not caring if the person they're working with shares their political beliefs. Do you care there are seven people in our congregation right now who have COVID? Do you care if they're Republicans or Democrats? Of course not. People who have health concerns battling cancer or something, do you care if they're Democrats or Republicans? Of course not. The people who work together to feed our kids in the backpack ministry, who pick up shoe boxes, they send the kids overseas, they do that whether they're Democrats or Republicans. It doesn't matter. We depend upon each other and our ability to work together is what has always made this country great. It's everyone's willingness to just get up and go to their jobs each day that keeps everyone else in this country employed. We need each other. We depend upon each other. What unites us, what unites us is so much more important than what divides us. So don't let them divide us. If our people can stay united, maybe we will force our leaders to work together as well. One thing about having Biden as president and a Republican Senate is that probably, probably nothing will get done because there's only one way it will happen. They'll have to work together 
and compromise and behave like the rest of Americans do every single day all across our country who work hand in hand and arm in arm to make our country great. They're going to have to act like regular day Americans do if they're going to change anything and accomplish anything. And so that is my prayer for them. That's my prayer for them. What is my prayer for us? Presidents come, presidents go, and my prayer is always the same. In the end, I know the president is not really in control as much as we may think. I know there's a God who's in charge of everything, looking down on everyone from a mortal throne, a God who created all of us and who reigns over all. And you know what our nation is really as strong as? Our nation is really as strong as the number of people who open up their hearts to God's love and spirit and who let that love and spirit overflow from their hearts and lives into the hearts and lives of others who need God's love. Because nothing would unite us more than the spirit of God. And we are strongest when we are united. The writing may have been on the wall for President Trump. His time as president is over. The writing will one day be on the wall for President Biden, too. Presidents come and go. But the writing will never be on the wall for our country, not as long as our people across this great country work side by side day after day, setting aside our differences. Because what makes America great is that we have always done that. And so we need to pray for our leaders to do that as well. And in the end, what gives me comfort personally is to know that no matter who the president is or who controls the Senate or when this pandemic will end, in the end, I know God is in control. I know the God who created the universe is on the throne. I know, hallelujah, he reigns.
Hallelujah, he reigns indeed. Friends, with Veterans Day this week, we want to thank all our veterans who have served our country. Thank you for your service. It didn't matter, you see, if they were Democrats or Republicans when they served in the Army or the Navy or the Air Force, the Marines or National Guard, wherever they served, they served because they loved our country. If you watch the news, conservative or liberal, they could try to convince you that your next door neighbor hates America, that your next door neighbor is what is wrong with America, but nothing could be further from the truth. Your next door neighbors are your brothers, your sisters. They love America. And what happens is makes our country strong. What happens is when people come together with different opinions, but they come together in their love for God, their love for our country, and they work together to make our country great. So let us pray that we can come together as a country. And I pray that the people of God can lead the way in doing that. For we are one in the Spirit. Friends, as you go about your lives this week, may the blessings of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord and Savior, and the peace and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Listen as we close with this song of unity.